Hi guys, um, it's Claire. This is going to be the third tutorial in Joanna Bassford's Magical Jungle Book. For those of you who've been following, um, you can see which page we're on. We've been doing some blending and some wet look leaves. And today, um, you can see I've coloured in this leaf here. What I'm going to show you is how to replicate that. And we've already done a little bit of it in terms of blending. So I'm going to replicate it on this larger leaf here. But I'm going to show you how to make um, a little drop of water sit on the leaf. Hopefully, anyway. Um, so I'll show you which colours I've got out. Because I'm, I'm zoomed in quite closely today. Because clearly I want you to see exactly what's going on in this, what will be quite a small circle. Um, and I've got my book angled slightly so that the, the pinnacle of the leaf is facing towards me. So that I'm not kind of... Um, bending my wrist too much. I've got the leaf in the in the direction that I'm in the direction that I'm sitting. Okay, so colours. We're using quite similar to colours to yesterday, believe it or not, only with a less of the cobalt turquoise colour. So we have we have the lightest shade is grey green light. Then again from yesterday we have the next palest shade which is pale sage. Then going up in darkness, we have again the sap green light. Then we have, um, and this is not one we used yesterday, it's a slightly darker shade again, it's called Kelly Green. And then we've got the cobalt turquoise, and as you can see, these are the Prismacolor pencils that I've been using so far. So let's start with the raindrop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fourth colour, so that's the um, fourth darkest colour which is the Kelly Green colour and I'm going to give it a quick sharpen because I want a very sharp edge to the pencil and you'll understand why when we start. So I think I'm going to put this raindrop kind of, of here. So what I'm going to do just by hand, um, just by eye, is just with the uh, green pencil, not, a, not an HB pencil, is just draw in A circle like so what I'll do is I'll slightly go around that edge just to make it stand out a little bit more now that I know I've got a decent circle shape and it doesn't have to be perfect if you want to use a penny as um, a little marker by all means do so or anything that you've got to get yourself a little round shape will be fine Okay, so I'm going to put the Kelly Green pencil down for a moment and I'm going to start with the lightest shade, which is the grey green light. And what we're going to do is I'm going to start um, in this right hand part of the circle and I'm going to lightly, I'm not pressing hard at all, just draw in a little circle at the side. And you can see where my pencil's hitting the page. I'm not pressing hard. What I'm going to do is, inside this circle, I am going to press a little bit harder. And again, it's a light shade, so bear with me because you might not be able to see it properly until I get the darker shades in. But you can see where my pencil's going. And because I'm colouring in a circle, I'm not colouring like that as I normally would if I'm blending. I'm actually using the technique from yesterday called scumbling. So I'm using tiny circles to fill in the coloration. Okay. Then I'm going to take the pale sage colour and I'm just going to mark out a little outer circle again following the shape of the the big circle but following round from that lighter colour and I'm just going to scumble that area there so you can see it slightly goes over the lighter shade again I'm not pressing very hard at this point but what we'll do is when we get the other colours on, we'll go back and press a bit harder. So I'm just going to go back to the grey green light and just scumble blend. So I'm not using a blender pencil. All I'm doing is scumble blending those two colours together in a circle. OK, we'll go to our third colour, sap green light. And again, I'm just going to make an arc here. Like so. And I'm going to scumble 
this portion here again quite lightly now what I'm going to do is go back to that second green the pale sage and press a little bit harder so I'm going to scumble blend that much a little bit harder just to get rid of that variation in colour line and you can see it works really well okay so then I'm going to go to the um, the Kelly green which is the next shade in darkness that's the one that we made the outline of the circle in and I'm just gonna scumble in this last little bit here again following that pattern of the actual circle itself okay so again that was quite light I'm gonna go back to the sap green and press a little bit harder over that blend line like so and now with that darkest Kelly green colour I can just darken up this edge bit and as I, say, as I said when we were blending you can go over this with the various shades as many times as you like to get a properly seamless effect and I think I'm pretty pleased with that I might just quickly run the blender pencil over it <laughs> I've got my Prismacolor colourless blender I'm just cleaning the tip and I'm just gonna just scumble blend that again and I'm pretty pleased with that okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the the very deep cobalt turquoise colour that's one of the ones we were using yesterday and I'm gonna give that a quick sharpen as well okay because what I want to do now is to make this um, raindrop really shine what we're going to do is just put a little highlight and I'm following the line of the circle and I'm pressing quite hard I'm just going to put a little highlight there on that edge there and another one in the opposite corner of the circle so one around about here and again I'm pressing quite hard <laughs> and you'll immediately see that makes the raindrop look, look as though it's standing off the leaf now I'm just going to take that quickly take that Kelly green colour that we did the outline in and I'm just gonna because that cobalt turquoise is quite deep I'm just going to blend it in at those edges there and you can see that makes quite a good little water droplet on its own but then the neat little trick is we take a white gel pen this is a Sakura a jelly roll white gel pen and all I'm going to do is just make little dots so I'm going to make an arc round about here and you can see I'm dotting because you get more gel on the page rather than just doing that and it's just going to make that little light reflection that you would get on water to make it look realistic if you can see that and then I'm going to put another tiny little one a smaller one just there and then I think I'm pretty happy with that so that is how to make a water droplet now what I'll quickly show you to do how to do is we'll just go over blending again um, and I'll quickly fill in this leaf in the same way that I've done this one the reason I wanted to show you this I know we've done blending before but these colors are not as close together as the family of purples were in the first tutorial so you've got to be a little bit more careful um, in terms of how you blend so I'm just going to start with the, the grey green light colour and bearing in mind I've got five colours in my hand so I roughly want to kind of divide the leaf up into, into the five different shades equally so I'm kind of going to put my first colour marker and I'm just shading lightly like we did on the blending video I'm just making myself a little marker and then everything from the bottom of that light shade for the rest of the bottom of the leaf I'm going to press on a lot harder now again this is the very lightest shade so it could be quite difficult to see but bear with me and I'll just fill this in and you can see that this is the same that I've used here okay Now what I'm going to do is take the next colour 
which is our lovely pale sage colour. Uh, hang on, two seconds, let's go back because we've got this lobe here and that has to be the same as the rest of the leaf. So my, my mistake, I'm just going to quickly go back and do the same with this lobe because then what we'll do is we will make our next marker across the leaf in the pale sage. So I'm going to take it around about here, I think. And I'm going to just mark out a very light line. Then again, everything from the bottom of that to the bottom of that lobe. I'm pressing on a lot harder. Now what I'm going to do is, for this bit where I've actually got the two colours coming together, because they're not all that close together in shade, I'm actually just going to go over this join line quite lightly, like that, and then press harder in between those two, like that. So I've got lighter gradation of colour both on the inside and outside edges now. And because the colours aren't that close together, or not as close as the purples that we used, what I can then do is go back to that lightest colour and go over that quite firmly. And even though the colours are not you know, closely bonded, they, they do you can still get that lovely melded line. And I'm going to repeat that same process with the next colour up. So I've got the sap green light. <laughs> I'm going to make my line around about there, I think. And this is where you've got to be a little bit careful because you're coming into where you've coloured the, the little raindrop. And um, you can see that I've used the same colours for the raindrop as we're using for the leaf because clearly water's clear. <laughs> clearly water's clear, that's good, isn't it? Um, which just means that it, it would pick up the colours of the leaf underneath. So again, because this is quite a big get jump in shade, I'm just going to do a light touch on this edge as well. And then everything in between, I'm going to press a lot harder and just, I'm taking care with the outside of that droplet circle. And you can see why I didn't draw the um, the droplet in pencil now because I didn't want that huge um, grey line to stick out. I wanted it to become part of the leaf, which you can see works quite well. So I'm just going to finish this lobe off and then we will meld that second line. Apologies if the camera is jumping up and down very slightly it's because it's zoomed in quite far so I'm going to use the pale sage colour which is the the second one of these and then again just with a firmer hand go over that gap and that blend line magically disappears